Um, whether I'm talking about a heritage building or whether I'm talking about a non-heritage building, um, that equivalency still has to exist. So as I sit here, and I'm being very honest, if someone was to say to me, yes, but it's a heritage building and it's very old and we don't want to do it, um, my reply would be, at the end of the day, I have to be satisfied that for the occupants that are using that heritage building, that we are protecting them in a manner that is going to provide the same equivalency. Because if I can't do that, I can't approve it. And that's where we really have the pinch point. So um, I, I do think that the objective based codes, and I saw that um, in that email they talked about Part 11 and some of the, the nuances of Part 11 that could be used for heritage buildings, I believe. Um, so I think the objective based code in the fire code can provide some additional tools in the toolbox for various heritage buildings that might at the end of the day um, relieve them of some prescribed requirements but still providing the same equivalency for the safety of the occupants and I can't stress that enough at the end of the day that's what I would uh, hang my hat on is the safety of the occupants. So I, I know that's sort of the Reader's Digest 10 cent tour, but it does provide you sort of an encapsulation of where we come to it from the fire code perspective. Thank you very much. Questions with to our view? Yeah, I was glad to, to hear you talk a little bit about equivalency. Are you familiar with archaic building assemblies that uh, talk about uh, historic plaster and its uh, um, Rating, fire rating, and would that be something that, like you say, as, as, as long as it meets the, the one hour, say for instance, uh, for fire, to keep the fire away for one hour, um, so there are documents like that for historic plaster that would um, show that it would meet that requirement. We do have tools that we can refer to. One is the archaic manual, and I think there's a document that comes out of the states from their urban and housing also that does go back and take a look at a lot of the types of construction, wall construction, floor construction, depending on how the flooring is installed. Is it installed on its vertical as opposed to a flat, like a, a piece of hardwood. If you take a piece of hardwood and install it vertically, like a lot of floors were done in the olden days to give it strength and rigidity, uh, provides a certain level of fire resistant rating. So we do have those archaic manuals. The problem becomes if those floors, and we'll use because plaster ceilings is one of the things you're probably, ultimately someone is going to have to go in there and do a non destructive analysis of that floor uh, to determine that it's going to provide that equivalency. We do use the manuals, and sometimes it might be a, an easy fit um, in terms of looking at it, but it's never that. You know, I, I would say. In percentages, I would say 90% of the time, someone's going to have to really do an analysis, and that may be where the objective-based code comes in, where you get an architect or engineer that is going to say, look, I've done the, I've done the, uh, the assessment on it. And uh, I have to say, and, and my counterparts from the building department are a little more astute at this, um, an architect or engineer dealing in opaque buildings has a whole wide array of tools that they can, they can choose from. Um, because they're in that business and they probably know more archaic manuals, more archaic equivalencies. And at the end of the day, if someone, again, can provide a bona fide reasoning as to that this plaster will withstand a one hour, then we wouldn't have an argument in it if they, if they seal it. Now, the other thing is, and I'm being very honest, if you have half an hour, but you can upgrade the building's fire alarm system in some manner or, or something like that, that again, will combine to provide the equivalency for an occupant getting out of the building in, in a reasonable time. That's really what it's all about, and I think the objective-based code will ad will address that. Sorry for the lengthy response, but just to get back to the archaic issue. Other questions? Thank you very much. I, I know that uh, you put to rest some of the concerns I had uh, of a rigid code that would uh, sort of preclude looking in other directions. And I'm very glad to see that uh, the government has taken the approach of giving some flexibility in making decisions. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, um, now uh, members of the building uh, division here to speak to item 7.2, and which I would ask the staff again to introduce. Um, through the chair, I believe the question from the, from the committee was twofold. It was about we screen properties um, to identify whether they're heritage properties or not when, a, when an application comes in for a demolition or a building permit. Um, so there's that component, and then there's the uh, Part 11 equivalencies when there is a building permit and um, something's required that may conflict with the heritage value of the property. So we have uh, Dio Ortiz here, and Frank Peter, and uh, Chief Building Official um, Ed Van Vanderman. Okay. 
First off, thanks for inviting us to your meeting. First time for me, and it's good to see all of you here. Um, I'm here with Frank Peter, Peter Frank. He's uh, part of our customer service for people at the front counter who are the customers in the main building and part nine buildings, housing and small buildings. And Leo, their engineering is our manager of the engineering group and uh, is with ICI industrial commercial buildings. Uh, just a little bit of foreground before they answer the questions you just asked us. Um, years ago, people would come into a building department asked to renovate a historical building and had to take apart historical things to meet the current building code. And the public recognized in the early 2000s that it was inappropriate in some cases when you're losing historical artifacts. So in 2006, our prescriptive code added a portion called the objective code, like the fire department in 2007, we were a year earlier. The difference between us and the fire is that <coughs> our prescriptive code, now partly objective code, deals with new construction only. <coughs> And fire has no play in the game at the moment, to a certain extent. When the building is finished, fire takes over. And they look at the longevity of the building, you know, keeping it current for the people inside. So we also have the fire left in our building code. The building code is a uh, code that ensures safety of the building and the people inside, and we're addressing and enforcing that. Part 11 gives us some latitude, like Frank was suggesting, to look at objective alternatives clients in terms, to look at things that were there before, can we do something with it or around it to keep that artifact in the building and keep people safe while they're there. There's some room for us to make those decisions. It's an opportunity for us, but at the end of the day, we need to keep people safe. So you asked the question about the screening process. Can you talk about that? <coughs> uh, Frank Peter, I'm with the um, uh, customer service section of the building services division. We, we deal with the front counter, so we get customers that come in off the street, the, app, the designers, the architects, engineers, the homeowners, anybody coming in to apply for a permit or to obtain information. So what we do at the front counter, when we get an applicant to demolish a building, for example, um, whether it's, it's my staff or whether it's DOs, building engineers, we, we review the address of the property, we pull it up on our, on our GIS net, which is our, our mapping system. And through that, we have uh, various tools that we use, and one of them that we do is screen to see if there's any heritage on the building, especially with the, with the demolition of the building. So we check the, the three designations. We check to see if it's, if it's of uh, interest, whether it's uh, under the, uh, the cultural heritage value or whether it's actually designated. And we've got um, our, our mapping system that I was just talking about, the GIS, it's called GIS Net. And we also have uh, our permit tracking system called the MAN. And our, uh, the properties on there are, are there's, a, there's a flag on there to tell us one of the three, whether they're um, designated of interest or they're under the cultural heritage uh, value. If the property is just of interest to, to the Heritage Committee, then we, we, can, we accept the application, but then we send out a letter to the, the owner of the property, advising them, because they may not be aware that the property is of interest to the Heritage Committee. We also CC the Heritage Committee um, people. Um, we, we can't delay the issuance of the permit, uh, but we just give a heads up to the owner that to, to make them aware that the property is of interest and there are some um, possible funds available or some information available if they wish to pursue designation under the Act. So um, that's basically what we do with the, the ones of interest. The other two, the, um, the ones that are, are, are of heritage value uh, and the ones that are actually designated, we do not take the applications in for demolition. We refer them to Megan or to the heritage um, people for the proper approvals prior to acceptance of the applications. Okay, so that's you know a real a real quick snapshot of, of what we do at time of application. I, I just wanted to ask: um, Does the letter that you actually send to the owner have the wording? Or would you like to pursue designation because there are yes, interest loans it, available? Yep, it has it. I'm, I'm not sure if it says interest loan, but there, what we do say there are. Um, you may wish to pursue designation. We give contact names and numbers to uh, to the applicants. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Thanks very much, uh, Frank. Uh, can you just clarify the three? Categories again, because I'm not sure I understood them. I understood the ones that are designated. That's yeah. straightforward. I, we we talk about ones that are listed. Maybe, maybe Megan could clarify as well from the heritage. Um, through the GIS, we get 
chair, it's the three categories are the listed, which is included in our inventory from the former municipalities, um, which I believe is right, called listed. Just, uh, the ones of interest? The ones of interest. Yeah, the ones and of that's interest. The listed, okay. listed properties that we were They're listed as of interest, right? Yeah, it's everybody has sort of has different terminology, I guess. And then the second one is the properties that are included in the register, the municipal register of property, cultural heritage value, or interest. And that is the 60 day delay of demolition provisions. And um, and then there's the, the designated properties that are designated as individually or in and Mr. Chair, uh, the ones that are uh, listed, I'll, let's use that language uh, and Frank uh, versus on the registry or designated, that's the two other categories. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Chair, Frank said that if they're just listed, you send out that letter. Say, by the way, did you know it was listed? You can, you can designate it. Uh, uh, but you wouldn't slow down the uh, demolition process. You would, you would ignore the demolition process. So the ones that are listed, uh, maybe three to, to Megan, um, if we find out something is in peril in, in a variety of ways, it could be a development application, could be a demolition application, and it's listed, uh, probably many of us will want to see that uh, uploaded to the registry to provide the 90 days or whatever the whatever that uh, number is through the Ontario Heritage Act, which uh, provides opportunities for possibly uh, designating that, that building. So how does that relate to Frank's uh, comment that, that he doesn't, he starts the, the, the clock ticking on the demolition process, and it goes through whatever number of days on their end, as per their act, their uh, legislation. How, how, how does that happen? Is, I think a number of us would be concerned um, if we're moving towards demolition uh, with the listed building. Uh, pretty sure at that point it becomes somewhat of an Mr. Chair, uh, properties that are listed, how do we add those to the registry? Because we wouldn't, we wouldn't know about any of this, I don't think, by, by, by the sounds of it. The Municipal Heritage Committee wouldn't know about any of this occurring. But we would, we would uh, in, in the case in the past, we've taken listed buildings and added them to the registry, have we not? Through this committee, or who would do that? Uh, through the chair, the, it's council that approves additions to the register. And um, in terms of the listed properties, there just, there just usually isn't the time to go to go through all of that. We explain that to the owners and, and um, we try to encourage them to retain the buildings, but it, we don't have a formal way of protecting them when they're just listed. But so, um, yeah, go ahead. So. But through, um, we are undertaking a process of, of uh, reviewing the inventories and trying to get as many properties that have potential value added to the registry. So as you may be aware, we were doing the pilot project of the downtown area to try to we'll get as many properties that were of higher interest onto the registry so we would have that opportunity. And then that, that project is currently that will be to staff. So currently council would, wouldn't know that, that a demolition uh, permit has been requested for a listed building. Uh, you have the discussions that you have informally, but there's no formal process uh, currently. Uh, although, as you said, Megan, the, the study you did in the downtown, one of the outcomes there would be to, to take a number of those listed buildings and add them to the registry. If not, move ahead with designation perhaps with some of them. Uh, but any sense of, uh, just remind us how many listed buildings, is that the 7,000 number we talked about in the past? Uh, um, and then we're, we're going through the process to try and uh, uh, update that list. Uh, David Cumming always used to tell me it may not be entirely coming down. There may be other buildings we, we add that are absolutely never added to the list once upon a time for whatever reason. So there may be some that are missing from the list. Uh, 
So that provides me quite a bit of discomfort, Mr. Chair, um, in terms of the informal nature of that, understanding where we're responding uh, slowly because we haven't provided enough funding to the department to to do these analysis of that list of 7,000. So I think I can just ask one final question. Uh, thanks for the leeway to, to do so, but Ed, uh, you and I have been in discussions uh, recently about uh, about uh, one of the schools, so the Delta High School, I guess. No, sorry, <coughs> Sanford. Uh, and uh, Paul Wilson's been involved in that in our committee. And uh, so Sanford Avenue School, is that listed, but not on the registry? Yeah. Through the chair, that's, that's correct. So, so I, I asked you the other day after right. the school board had, had uh, put in a uh, demolition application, they hadn't yet at that right. point. Uh, but if they did tomorrow, uh, the process or lack of process, I'll say, um, yeah. if I'm being pejorative, uh, that, that Megan described just now would be the one that was followed. So we would never know uh, about that demolition. Council wouldn't know, we wouldn't know, uh, and it would follow a process. And the, maybe the final question in terms of, I don't know if you're going to go there, but you've got a very clear uh, set of rules that the building department has to follow when a demolition application is, comes in. They can't uh, easily slow it down. Uh, Council Morelli response said, well, we just won't issue that permit. I, I don't think we have that option. <laughs> so uh, maybe just uh, outline, uh, just take that school, if you don't mind, as an, as an example, uh, what, would, what would typically happen in X number of days. And there are very clear timelines. Uh, and if uh, someone like me jumped up and down, um, my sense is I would just be exercising. Uh, not, not, not making a difference uh, with that process, but just uh, if you can clarify using that as an example, sure. if you don't yeah. mind, Mr. Chair. Maybe just to the Chair, yeah. just, just to clarify, the Provincial Building Code is a provincial act. Mm -hmm. It's not a local municipal mm -hmm. act, it's local regulations. And it directs the municipality how to behave in the facility for application. And one of the directions is that when we all look up a law, the list of buildings is not, now we shall issue the building permit in your 10 days to get it up and all the pieces are together. As part of a new process, I think it's Councilor McGaddy's interest in this, we're advising the ward councillor that the demolition permit is brought into our department. At least the councillor will know. But we can't stop the process. We will follow through with the permit as was requested. So, how many days would we have to create a public uproar for whatever it's worth? Uh, Sorry? How many it's days? Ten days. Six. Yeah, it's ten, 10 days for the permit. And you have to from a from a issue from, from a complete application. Yeah. So if we're missing some of the files or something else that goes with it. But it's ten days when it's all parts are there, and ten days it has to go to the door. So I think this is a thought that we can come back to a little yeah. later on what we're talking about. Well, I just saw one little be. question just to finish the loop on that though. Um Council Morelli finds out, I guess in this case, uh lets me know or whatever. Um, at that point, does he have the ability to run off to council and uh, add it to the registry, or is it too late? Once the application is in, it's a standalone application, you can't touch it anymore. Okay. It has to be on the list prior to the register, prior to the application. Yeah, but we could we could register it now uh, if we wanted to. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah. My question may not fit into this discussion because we're talking about registry or anything, but buildings of interest, but in that heritage district, is there any trigger mechanism that would apply to council or apply to the local? Yeah, it's the same. If it's in a heritage district, we would, the same rule would apply as if it were actually designated on the, on the act. Um, you stated earlier that it would uh, go to the committee. The reality is it doesn't go to the committee. It may go to staff, but it doesn't come to the committee. So does the act require it to go to the committee or just to staff? No, it's just it, the act. Are you talking about for ones that are, are uh, designated or the, the ones of, of, of cultural heritage value? Mm -hmm. We just refer them to uh, to the heritage uh, staff. Yeah. So whatever process they need to go through, we just wait for an end result. Yeah, you said the committee. That's oh, right. sorry. So okay. that, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah. So it doesn't require I should have staff, sorry, yes. It doesn't require to notify the committee. We, it does not, correct. Maybe it should. Yes, legislation. It's a 
question for the staff meeting um, later. There's no formal way of the building department to notify the heritage department that a property of interest they received a, a demolition. They, I mean, I guess in some sense they do formally because they copy us on the letter okay. that they send out. So we do get formal documentation, um, but at that point, there's nothing we can do formally do. <laughs> so <laughs> the only mechanism that exists for us to become aware of, of the, the issue with the property of interest is a demolition permit. And once that happens, we can't react to it anyway because the rules are there. We missed the boat. So really the only mechanism this committee has to deal with properties of, of heritage interest is to be proactive and develop, move some of those properties to either the register or designated place. And um, I'm actually just through the chair just to, to add to that, um, the Heritage Department does have Chair, how much work is involved for, for staff to get the property into register? And, uh, you don't know, yeah, you know, have staff to do many uh, designations. Uh, how much work for registering the property? Um, um, the staff that we evaluation to determine if it has heritage value. And then we do a report to the Committee and Council and request that the property be put on the municipal register and put on staff's work plan to be designated. So that's right now how we're putting properties on the register. So it's based on that initial request to designate. Um, we have had, I think, two uh, requests now just to be put on the register. And so again, we do a preliminary assessment to determine if there's heritage value. And then we move forward on that basis. I think in order to get ahead of the game and be more um, proactive, um, that's where the review of the inventories comes into it. And so as a pilot project or a first phase of the review of the inventories to bring them up to date as well because they, they are um, dated. Um, and so we've been going through that process, at least in the downtown. Um, the review of those properties um, took um, probably a year field work uh, just to update the data. Um, now the actual review of um, the heritage value of those properties to determine which ones we should bring forward to put on the register, that is what has to occur now. And we, we have hit a, a resource issue in terms of staffing, um, but that would be the next step. So we are trying to, to move forward on that then. Stemming from the review of the downtown, then we would come forward with the plan to committee again to say how we should we should roll this out across the city that we think. Uh, so, if we let's say, for instance, uh, Sanford School, which is one we've discussed here, if we want to try to save that, then we should be requesting staff to move that to um, the, uh, the register. Is that right? Uh, that, the chair, that, is, that is a, a possible route. It's the only route, isn't it? Um, well, you can, re you can request it to be designated or you can request right. it to be put on the but you're hard pressed staff wise, you've lost staff and we have no replacement. Okay. Okay. But the amount of work to register or put the property on the register is, is less than what it would take to designate in terms of determining its heritage value. have to be um, a proposed course of action whether or not we'd be wanting to go forward with designation. So ultimately that 
that work would have to be carried out. Um, because if, if we were to provide that option to council at that point in time, we'd have to go through the full cultural evaluation, evaluation in, a, in a more abbreviated time period. Um, and again, that's one of one of the reasons for, for moving forward and updating the inventory and trying to be proactive about um, moving forward on uh, some of the properties that are listed. So just um, if, if uh, again, following the same example, if Sanford Avenue School was added to the registry, uh, that's not the be all and end all. It's, it's uh, and the demolition permit comes in after it's, it's already on the registry. So you, you see that in your database, Frank. Um, that only means there's 90 days, uh, 60 days to stay of execution, uh, which really the only option in there is, is the only option in there to designate it. Which would which would uh, stop a demolition permit? Question mark. Yes, yeah, sir. Through the chair, we would, well, would stop the demolition permit until such time as council made a decision on the heritage permit for the demolition. Right. So you would or deny it? You designate it, Mr. Chair. If you could, if you could designate it, uh, and then uh, through the demolition the, the, the uh, development permit process or whatever the heritage yeah. permit process uh, demolition would be requested perhaps and, and that permit would have to be issued uh, to allow the demolition to occur so it's, it's the 60 days is what we would buy the school in this case uh, uh, to see what would happen next and I, I just I, Michelle, I, maybe I'll talk to you after about the um, the downtown project uh, if it's stalled at this point and you've got pick a number uh, a couple of hundred um, properties that really should be on the registry and won't be till God knows when if the, if the project is uh, in limbo then that's a huge problem for us as we just heard it. any of those 200 buildings or pick a number I don't know how many buildings there are uh, could be demolished tomorrow and none of us would know about it uh, and uh, so I, I guess is that pro project uh, stalled Michelle or, or or let me ask, when, when would we be in a position to see those registered? Because that's really what we want to know. Um, through the chair, um, we had um, two staff, um, two cultural heritage planning staff, uh, leave uh, this fall. Uh, we are in the process of hiring um, another cultural heritage planner. Um, as well, we still have funds associated um, with that project to hire a um, cultural heritage planning technician uh, to finalize the project. So it's a matter of so I, so I see this as more of an interest. The question I asked was when will those buildings, when will those buildings be placed on the registry? Um, uh, this time next year, uh, June. So I just need to know how long those buildings have have before they may be demolished. Um, they are through the chair. I can't speak to whether or not any of the buildings will be demolished, but I, I can. The plan in the, in the business plan uh, for the department is to have them come forward in 2013. Yeah, one more quick question. Uh, when uh, when Frank sends his uh, CC, does it go to you, Megan, uh, that there's been a, a demolition request for a uh, inventory property? If that goes to you, does it? The chair of China, if it goes to the manager or if it goes directly to me, but anyway, it ends up with me. Right. Uh, so, is, is, is there any reason why? All members of the Heritage Committee couldn't be copied on that by Heritage staff uh, right away. Even though there may be nothing we can do, we at least know about it and, uh, and put our minds to the put our minds to the test. Um, the chair, it's uh, it's a matter of public record, so it wouldn't there wouldn't be a privacy issue with that. And I, I suppose we could just forward them on. Through the chair, maybe I could add that if, if somebody asks for a copy of a demolition permit application, it is not public information until it becomes a building permit. Just I don't know if that if that um, if that changes or I just thought I'd let you know that that, that is part of our process. I didn't quite understand that. Does that mean it's not public information until until it's been granted? The, the building permit, the information on contained in the building permit application, is not public information. Uh, the building permit, once it's issued, is public information. 
but in other words, it's public. Let's say it was a demolition request. It's public after it's been granted? Correct. Yes. No, that's great. Yeah. That's too late. Yeah, that's too late. And, and if made in order to CC us as members of the Heritage Committee on that, that would be uh, a breach. If it's not of interest, why are we not going to do I mean, we put it on our list here. Our list here. They don't know it's there. I think, I think the discussion is, isn't really so much one with people in building departments. It's our own process. Okay.
two of them to the chair. Thank you for the invitation. And we're here whenever we need it. Thank you. Good at our last meeting, we discussed item 7.3. We discussed the themes for your end reports. Anybody got anything you want to add to that? What's the deadline? We really should have everything in by the December meeting if possible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to ask I think last meeting we talked about a theme for our report. Yeah. And I think that it was suggested by someone that the theme could be schools. Right. And I think maybe we should vote on that if that's, sorry, like I'm not the boss here, but I just want to suggest that. <laughs> and just to that, Mr. Chairman, I think staff should make everyone aware also that there is a subcommittee now that's been put together for surplus, potential surplus school board sites. And direction is being formulated going forward of intent of what may happen with some of these sites and the board counselor's um, wishes as far as purchasing for the land because it, it may be part of green space right now that accommodates the neighborhood. So that could be part of what um, information comes back to this committee also because there may be some older schools in that listing. I know I'm on that committee, but I missed the first meeting on it, but I'm on that committee. So. That's right. I'd like to suggest that a great writer, Paul Wilson, write a little story to go into this annual report if we're going to, we're going to make it for the theme on schools. Uh, well, yeah, and the, I, I think Kathy's idea is a good one. I think that's a, that's a great theme. Well, let's, let's, get the, yeah. well, let's get the horses uh, in right, the exactly. line and yeah. get a motion first to make that the theme of the report. The okay. Okay. Yeah, that you, want, you brought it up. You want to make it okay? Great. I'd like to encourage Paul to well, write. Yeah. I don't think we a motion for that. No, I know. No, I'm just letting it go. Okay, yeah. yeah. Those in favor of motion. motion. Here, now, if you want to work on it, sit more. Okay. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> Next week. Yeah, I have a nomination for the 2013 Council Municipal Heritage Awards. Uh, the nomination is for, recorded, is for uh, 153 St. Clair Avenue. It's uh, Tom Couchman and David Wood. They have put untold hundreds of thousands of dollars into this home, and you can see every penny of it at the front. And they have gone through every single uh, necessary, as far as I know, uh, uh, permit, permit and consulted regularly with Megan and the planning department. They have worked with Heritage and they've done an absolutely wonderful job on this home. And I think they deserve to be recognized. I'd like to get the, the chip here with all the information and, and how much money they spent to. If I could give that to you and maybe make sure the listen gets it or the committee gets it. Um, is this the, um, the award where we give uh, property reuse? Like last year, we did Vickers yeah. Heights, right, at Friday Church. I spoke to the owners of um, the Edgewater Manor, and he is absolutely excited that we might put his name up for a Heritage Building Reuse Award. So I would like to nominate the Edgewater Manor. Yeah, this should have been right back on time. Yeah. Uh, one, one more. Uh, <coughs> Mission Services uh, took over the old, it was last law school on Wentworth Street North. It was a building that was empty and might have fallen otherwise, and they had spent $2 million in there. They monitored the exterior of it. Uh, they've uh, stripped off the old uh, signage and have left the original signage. Of, I believe it was a textile school back in the 1920s, and uh, they've done a few of the job. It was HTI, wasn't it? Was HTI for a time or something before that? Many things.
Uh, sorry, uh, to share it. Is the same rule that the uh, former municipalities will submit one uh, nomination uh, for a building to be considered for the award? Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, but if you have one, you want to nominate. Okay, the Dieter's Roaster, uh, Roaster's Coffee Place uh, on 41 King Street. They took a little uh, shop, which used to be a funeral home, which used to be a vet, uh, vet, veterinarian store in the And they restored the floor in its uh, original uh, shape, and they turned it into a beautiful meeting spot uh, to restore the integrity of the building. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, check out 41 King Street West. I don't have that much more information on the building, but it's sort of about 1880s. And the building that's probably School of Art, uh, another one, uh, more visible perhaps, they did an extensive renovation. It's unbelievable. It was, um, uh, that building was circa 1880s. It was originally an industrial building until about the 19, uh, 1960s, I believe. It's not empty for 10 years. And in 71, the Dunn Valley School of Art took it over and uh, and they were using it as, a, as, a, as an art school. And uh, they, through, the, through the federal government, they got a grant and uh, did an unbelievable job. Uh, it's publicly more accessible now. Um, the, the interior is modernized. We'll be fairly sensitive to uh, some of the historic assets. I would urge anybody who's, a, who's an art lover or a heritage lover just to go take a look. It's a snappy one they've done. They put AstroTurf in the front, which I'm not so sure about, but uh, that's another story. Uh, motion to receive those nominations. Got another one. Oh, you got another one? One more. Uh, yeah, I have uh, the Cox Smith residence on 63 Cross Street, which is part of the um, uh, Cross Public Heritage District, uh, did a dining room patio extension. Uh, Cox is the, um, oh my God, I think you know, the Cox town. Fred, thank you. And uh, did a patio of uh, dining room on addition. And uh, they did it quite sensitive. It's quite, uh, quite beautiful. That's so, so, I mean, definitely like is that a commercial or is it? No, it's a residence. It's a residence. Yeah. Just uh, just outside the driving park. Oh, I don't have to take it. Okay. It's not in the heritage district. It's the last house before you go into the driveway. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. You're house. right. It, it it's is just outside. I just think correctly. It's not a heritage park. It's designated. So two, I move we accept the nomination. Okay. Senator. Oh, all those in favor? Sure.
landscapes, endangered buildings. Yes. Yes. As we go through this, um, it might be helpful just to remind us whether this is on the interest register or designated. Okay. Still there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you share the, um, the letters after the address? Yeah. Okay. But some don't have letters. Oh, some don't have letters. Well, we can go through and grant that as we go, I guess. So, the are still there. Yep. No, I'll let you get it out. Sure. I don't think it's going to make the letter. Yeah. How's the guy who's here really helping you out? Uh, did we, uh, uh, Councilor Farr and I met with the uh, the owner of the Canadian Youth Ballet Ensemble about a month ago, maybe it's five weeks now, and uh, they indicated uh, there had been uh, a couple of offers for the building. Uh, not a lot of detail on exactly what the use would have been. Uh, one that I'm aware of, I think, would have been an adaptive reuse, uh, roughly friendly to I think what a lot of us would think. Um, they were not accepted. The, the two offers were uh, provided, and there was a, a third offer coming in, we were told, uh, from a developer. That was uh, the only uh, identification provided for the, uh, the, uh, the third offer. And uh, Councilor Parr and I are to meet with the Canadian Youth Valley Ensemble again. I think it's coming up in about two weeks. Uh, we'll be sitting down with, uh, with those people that I guess to hear about this uh, other offer or whatever, it's, it's always it's a little bit uh, elusive. Uh, and you, you probably you may have seen the uh, article on the CBC uh, on on the uh, Tivoli. I was interviewed for that and uh, other people. Thank you. Okay, we're small more on schools. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have a question actually. Um, can I ask through the chair to Councillor McCaddy? Did the ballet company pay for the Tivoli? And are they now selling it for a lot of money? Well, Mr. Chair, um, through you to Kathy, uh, they, uh, the building was uh, donated to them from uh, Sam the Record Man, remember Sam Steinberg? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, or maybe they paid $2 for one of those kind of Building bills. and land. Uh, and land. The whole property, yeah. And uh, yes, they're. Uh, they put some money into it in their defense. Um, it's unclear uh, how much they put into it, and I don't think any of us will know. Um, uh, but yes, they're seeking, I think, to sell it for a million dollars or 1.2 million, something in that range, in their mind. The offers, uh, as I understand it, were in the, were in the high hundreds of thousands. Um, and it's a little unclear um, their role as a charity and how some of this uh, factors in. So I think maybe I'll uh, won't say any more because um, I don't know anymore. Uh, but I it certainly uh, raises questions. Give it a time. I remember the Broadway Cinema where the people in Hamilton gathered together and raised money so that the owner, not the owner, the renter could buy the building. And that happened. Enough money was raised by the city of Hamilton for the renter to buy the building. And within a year, he sold it for a substantial amount of money, which he used to build a f another, no name mentioned, and he, yeah, other businesses. He did very well by that. So I hate to think that the ballet company was doing the same thing. Um, through the chairman, when you mentioned about the donation, they took a tax receipt, didn't they, for five million or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a tax receipt. You know, so to Mr. Steiner. Yeah. So you know, my probably the biggest was the city donation. money that, that, I don't think that it was. they got it from the city. That was my concern. So you answered my concern. Well, there was city money uh, through a grant mm -hmm. provided to stabilize the building. I can't remember how much that was. And also the front lawn, correct? Just the building. They, they, they have put some of their own money, I think, into uh, other parts of the property. Okay. Okay.
I sent everyone that's on our mailing list some websites for a petition signing for the federal government to preserve these. And that's all. Seems like they sure didn't know that was that in the works. Can we formally ask in the minutes that we'll take this information to that committee I, I and know. let them know that so that at least it looks like we're being, you know, communicated <coughs> about this that they took a lot of time and effort to Yeah, I sit on that back. committee anyway. Yeah, that's what I said. Right so I'll be keeping that back in the next time. Do we need a motion to add or return to one He's the spokesperson of that committee. Every single window is out and boarded up temporarily, I guess, to stop you from going in. There's not a window in either of the large buildings. They've just been forward here, uh, but um, altered that um, apparently they're going to be uh, using what frames are salvageable insulated glass and we're going to back in. So we're going to repair the frames and put them, but I'm suspecting that that may not be the truth. But oh, I should have said that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of an interesting <laughs> looking to see it so bare. Have you been buying it? No mm -hmm. so, so is occupancy still November? Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's full now. Yeah. We have a question. It says D, meaning designated. Did a heritage permit come through to replace or repair windows at Stinson School? Wasn't there some kind of a blanket one that came in with the roof and eavesdrop and all that? 
was about a year ago, because he's been slow getting going, and he came in quite a bit at the beginning, and he hasn't been for a while. Uh, through the chair, the Heritage Permit did come in in two months ago, and it was never a complete application. However, the uh, Permit Review Subcommittee did review it and, and did recommend, or recommend approval of some replacement of windows, but there were some conditions attached, and we were looking at the most appropriate way of, of doing that. Um, but that permit was not issued yet. So we will be following up. Where's the building people? We need a staff work over here. He's done this before. He did this with, uh, this will be the second or third time that he's gone ahead and done things for the department. How can we protect that these windows will be representative of the designation? What can we do? Well, to the chair, we will be following up on this. This is sort of new information that we discovered on the internet blog, but um, we will. We will, we will be following up on this as any consolation, I guess, is that their, their plan was relatively in keeping with the building. They were going to use double hung windows, they were going to keep the window frame and brick mold, but that was a proposal that was not approved. Thank you. So you mentioned last uh, month, I think, that uh, Mission Services, the same people who did such a nice job uh, on the old Mohawk building, looked across the parking lot and saw Sanford School and said, you know, we would really like to take that project on too. Um, so it, recently there was a, a meeting with uh, Councillor Morelli and uh, uh, Councillor McCaddy was there too, and, and we, we made him, Councillor Morelli, aware of this. And asked him, you know, just how much flexibility are there in the plans to knock Sanford down and build Rec Center. So, bottom line for Councillor Morelli was that uh, there have been plans in place, absolutely, and he wants to see green space for his people. He wants to uh, uh, perhaps see an addition to the Rec Center, but believes that perhaps there is a way to, there may be a way to do all things. And uh, what he offered to do was to uh, come up with the preliminary plans. I think they exist now. And, and he said, uh, you know, he, he knows what Mission Services has done and can do and believes that they would be capable of doing something nice in Sanford Avenue School. Uh, he said, take those plans, you can show them to uh, Mission Services and they can take a look and see if that's something that they can work within. Um, so we will see what happens. Uh, I, there had been a report that uh, there was going to be a demolition of question of school board uh, this week, uh, but uh, uh, Councilman Caddy checked that out uh, with, with Ed, and then that's, if it's, if it's happening, it hasn't happened yet. Um, and I have sent an email to the um, school trustee for that board, who happens to be also the uh, chair of the board, Tim Simmons, and I've just sent that, so I haven't heard back yet as to where the, where the board stands on this. So it's, uh, it's still alive, but uh, it's still very much in flux. So do I need to just yes. uh, ask, so if you're going to follow, we haven't received, uh, have you received the uh, plans from Council Morelli yet? No, I haven't. Talk about? No. I haven't seen them. Uh, no. And I, in light of the discussion earlier on, I, I think we probably need to go back to him and because I think he's under the uh, mistaken understanding that we can influence the demolition permit, uh, oh. which we absolutely can. We, that was very clear today, right? Absolutely. So uh, the building would have to be placed on the registry in order, in order to have that, have that discussion, or at least have 60 days, I guess. Right. So I, I'll try and uh, clarify that with him and maybe ask for the plans if they're uh, available. And that email you need to send Paul to uh, Mission Services, did they get back to you? Uh, I heard back from Gary Coleman that he was going to be uh, talking with uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Ed, but that's, uh, I haven't heard beyond that. Uh, and then I'll do with Council Morelli. They, they, well, they would speak to him directly? Well, I, I think they uh, would see the, uh, well, you know what, I, I can double check on that, but uh, I, 
Yeah, they need to see those plans first. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think there needs to be one more meeting. Yeah. With them involved. Right. Yeah. Okay. High School. Yeah, it's doing great. Um, <coughs> this is going to be on the list for, for the next three years anyway, because uh, current grade tens will be graduating. So it's doing fantastic as long as there's people in there. It's, Uh, wondering whether we need to add that to the registry. So um, I think this is going to be a question uh, involved with everything we hear about uh, this listed. Uh, because it, for some reason, something goes south on that, and uh, you know it, it uh, could be could be demolished fairly easily by the sounds of things. So uh, that may be a conversation with Councilor Marula, right? wondering uh, whether we could remove the list of blocks from the heritage properties update. Um, I, I, I have, you may have noticed I have no updates. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the building has been restored and it's open and unless Megan has some details month to month, I, I won't have anything to say. Uh, through, <coughs> through the chair, uh, Councilor has anything begun of the uh, rental properties that were going to be done in there? Or they just showed us that they I have no idea. You mean the units? Renting out the units? Sorry? Renting out the units inside? Is yeah, there's three or four commercial units we're supposed to be rented to provide income to the city, but staff's working city. on that. Yeah, through, through the chair, they're available for lease. Like they're, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how they're at being advertised or whatever, but if someone's interested, they can approach mm -hmm. facilities. In our agenda, so I feel that it's correct that it be removed. We have no influence yeah. on whether yeah. it was so 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 final point to add, it still hasn't been officially open, has it? Yeah. Which number are we waiting for a any word on a ceremony? Fine with that, but we're going to get to another one of the two things that is also designated 
the names and boxes of warehouse somewhere yeah. in the April closed. It says by keeping that one. Jeffrey Presser, who's this uh, manager, uh, sent me a follow-up email yesterday saying uh, I commented that the A and the L and the E in Westdale and the Marquis have been out for uh, mm -hmm. many, uh, many a long time. Uh, they had hoped that there would be money to fix that, but now the roof has started leaking, so no Marquis repairs until. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's being run on a... Yeah, it's just but they do have James Bond there right now, so. Yeah, it's for the whole Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe Council had examined this question, and that is the theater is the old arc uh, thing as opposed to digital. They've never gone digital? Yeah, no. And that is January 1st. Is there something about they've got to go digital? No. No, there's still uh, films be hard being made. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's hard every year, I think. Uh, but there are, at this point, still uh, films being made. Uh, in some cases, there's like six across Canada of a new film being made that, uh, that are shared across the country. Uh, I don't know how many of the James Bond, uh, the new James Bond films uh, yeah. were made, but they're running that with the old, uh, the old uh, projectors. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's no particular deadline that I'm aware of. may become uh, a rerun theater in a way. Repertory. Yeah, lots of lots we learned about the film business and how it runs and the difficulties of getting films and all that sort of stuff. But I won't uh, won't bore the committee with that. <coughs> Any more on that? Being known, let's move on to the uh, black question. Hamilton went to the district school board. <laughs> so I think we can uh, what get out of his misery and me out of my misery, and uh, this gets our black star award. I noticed, I noticed this morning that they had seven back rows in there, making sure that things were moved out where it's regular. It, it's well and truly gone. So that can come off. They actually look like they're starting to build. Yeah, 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 they're starting to build. 
John here from the planning department, by the way, in case you wonder who this guy was in the back of the room, uh, in case we haven't seen anything on that yet. So again, that registry question, right, uh, is that it could be demolished next week if we, uh, if, uh, and, and none of us will know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. A few years ago, I recall um, someone restoring Victoria Hall. That's only listed, that has no more protection Just uh, on that uh, issue, that may be one where um, the buildings come down, but there's a chance to save the facades. Uh, how do we, uh, how's the Heritage Committee feel about that? Sadism versus uh, nothing at all. What do we, what do we think? Well, I think our first, first uh, argument is just going to put it out like so. The fact that we are watching it, we, are, we put it on our list, and if we go this there, so it's a good motion. And the second that those in favor of putting on the list, that carry. Yes. Well, on Will's point, I think we need to, rather than react to newspaper thing or whatever about a particular building. I can <coughs> imagine that this particular block of buildings is part of the project that was done on the downtown property of interest. It would seem to me that a subcommittee or whatever would be looking at that work and making some decisions about priority buildings or properties on that work. So rather than simply say,
I'm, I'm in favor of asking, and, and in fact, Mr. Blanchard is a, is a good fellow. He has done a lot of great work in that center, which you would think would be one who, was, who would be interested in chatting. So that we've got that on our side, I think. But, uh, but again, this lack of uh, having any designation is uh, a bit of a challenge. Uh, and uh, just on that point, I just wanted to ask for the, the Gore district, uh, was there not a discussion or did, did we ever formally request that the uh, district be evaluated for, uh, for, for uh, designation? And if so, is, should, should not that whole area have been placed on the uh, registry? All the comments being made, and I, you know, I don't. I'm not saying I wouldn't be supportive of saying going forward we are comfortable with preserving the facade of these buildings. But I think it's a little premature at this time. I really think we need to know have an assessment. And I respect Mr. Blanchard and, and the group and everything that they do. But I'm just more concerned if you open that door a little bit to say, you know, we're we're we're, we're okay with that. That's all we're going to end up with. We could end up with more, and I really don't want to close that opportunity. And you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to put their feet to the fire. And if you put all your cards on the table to begin with, we have nothing to uh, have control on. So I would rather say that going forward, there be some sort of an assessment that we know exactly. Because at the end of the day, even if it is the facade, I'm sure our heritage group would want to go in and do an assessment of the heritage features in these buildings. So I want to be sure that we protect and allow that opportunity. Yes. Um, at the book there, a couple of us had the chance to meet with a lady who was just there to buy some books. And she commented about this building also being the home of a number of different artifacts. Yeah. Um, up in the attic, apparently there's some pulley and mechanism that you could use to hoist material from the street level to the storage. More than just the rules. So, just thinking about Councillor Pearson's comment, uh, and, and I, I think a number of other comments today, uh, in light of the building department's comments, uh, and just a process question, I guess, for staff. Um, a number of buildings could perhaps be placed on the registry, or requests could be taken to place uh, certain buildings on the registry. Does that, uh, I just, I don't think I've done it before. Uh, does this committee uh, move a motion and goes to the planning committee? The planning committee approves it, or uh, if they approve it, it goes to council. Uh, or, we, of course, the council could go directly to planning or GIC or anywhere they want to go uh, with, with a similar motion. But it's within our right uh, as a committee to ask that the following properties be placed on the registry. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, that, that would be. So I think, Mr. Chair, I'm going to, as we're carrying on the rest of the agenda, I'm going to make a little list of my, my own, and we can and maybe talk about it in, in a couple minutes. Sure, that would be one step, is, right? Is it more of an expedited process if the councillors take a directive? Well, we'll allow, yeah. I don't see the planning committee, so. Well, I'm on planning committee, but I don't, I don't see that there's, there's a difference whether the committee, and sometimes you strengthen the fact that knowing the committee has deliberated, and that recommendation has come from committee. I'm not saying the councillor doesn't have as much um, stand, but it is nice to know that you have a committee in place, and that's what you guys are for, that brought this recommendation forward. So it's been vented. So either way, with whatever councillor Rattani wishes to put forward, sure. The property should include the Bank of Nova Scotia and the Yeah. Yes. Twelve. Thank you. 
there Thanks seem to be um, not well attended? I think you said 12, 14, you said 18, by customers, or at least as well represented with exhibits and book sellers. But uh, my impression was that they were not attending. The first time I asked the circulator the question where to see my exhibitors, from the standpoint of our own exhibit, All right. uh, I think it was well received. Uh, we covered our costs, in fact, it was $15. And the salesperson for our committee award goes to Kathy Wayton. Great, much better than that. Yeah. Other than, yeah, so that's it. Mr. Chair, that the following addresses, uh, following properties be added to the registry. Uh, Sanford Avenue School, 149 Sanford Avenue North. Delta High School, 1284 Main Street East. Westdale Theater, 1014 King Street West. And uh, we're going to have to verify the uh, exact address, but 12 to 14, 18 to 22, 24 and 28 King Street. Is that West? East. 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 Yeah. Those are the addresses for mine. Start on one. Okay, those are the addresses. So, uh, just to clarify that, Chris, for you, uh, but but uh, that th those uh, properties be added to the uh, registry. Those in favor? Yeah. Any other items for discussion? Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, one point. Uh, I don't know if it requires a motion or just a request that. Uh, to the uh, elected council, whether there's a distinction in uh, privacy laws or not. No. Through the chair, I believe um, 
demolition permits are being cc'd to the counselor. We already get so I believe that's being it's recent. Well, well you get it. every CC, right. every demolition permit you get a cc of it. It, in, no. in any demolition of my ward, any property, I get a letter only saying that they have only for my ward. Right. So, for instance, that wouldn't uh, cover Sandra Avenue School here because yes. um, the three of our, our areas. Well, it would work. go to the ward counselor. Right. So but he's not on the heritage committee. Okay. So, it would have to be your I have an idea, and I, and I know it requires staff time, and I, I'd like to throw it out there for discussion, perhaps at our next meeting. But when this, um, when there is a connection between a demolition permit or a, a request to renovate or rebuild or whatever a property that is listed, we need documentation of that property. So we need to have pictures of what it looks like, look slash look like or what you know the interior is there I just throw it out there how can we get documentation on that property that in 10 days or 60 days will become non-existent so you're already surrendering and say we want it, it but we want to well it's only picture. listed yep no, and there's it. no protection right yeah. we yeah. listed it because it's valuable there's something about that building there and so if there is because i don't think the seven to eight thousand buildings mm -hmm. we've got documentation on do we no i'm pretty sure not all, all of them are as detailed as i would like <laughs> some of them are just <laughs> very nice <laughs> <laughs> i'm just throwing it out there and then i use that yes, but the project has no
just going back, and I apologize, I didn't catch it when we were dealing with it, but with the concerns with Stinson Street School and the windows, staff are going to investigate that now. Could you forward us all an email to let us know what's happening so that we are apprised as a committee? I think it would be, you know, due diligence for the committee, obviously, understanding what's happening there. I see enforcement. And that could be part of all the report from staff. I'm curious about the enforcement yeah. mechanism there. Is it the building department that would, that would go out and, and enforce? Megan, I don't know if you're, that's your job is to go out and tackle uh, Mr. Stinson. <laughs> there, it, it varies depending on what's been done. Um, if it's in contravention to the, of the building permit as well as the heritage permit, then we can issue a stop work order to the building department, have the building department issue a stop work order. Um, there are no stop work provisions under the Ontario Project Act, and we're not enforcement officers. We can't go on the property without permission. There's no such legal restrictions for us. So, um, in this case, because it's a windows, I don't think it's a building permit issue, and so we may be able to go to searches. We would be sending a letter. And we could potentially lay charge under the Act. What is the status of the downtown heritage inventory? The information has been gathered, has it? Um, through the chair, um, the data collection phase has been completed, so um, we have an up-to-date property by property uh, inventory for the downtown. Um, what has yet to be completed is a, an evaluation as to which properties should be uh, brought forward to committee and council for consideration to become on the register. Um, in addition to that, or as part of that process, um, we are committed to a public consultation um, process, making property owners aware that their property potentially could be on the register and, and informing them as to, to what that means as a property owner. Um, so that's the portion uh, that's yet to be completed, and that has been to be called in about six to nine months worth of work. And, and is, it, uh, is it stalled right now due to staffing concerns, or is it? Through the chair, it's staffing concerns. The planning technician that was hired. 